Welcome YouTube, welcome Twitch, welcome listeners from Spotify. We are here again. What is this? Week four? Week five? Uh, technically it's week five. <laughs> week five of the Overtime Podcast here with Alex, and obviously you see my main man Ethan for the WWE segment that we do called Beyond the Belt. Um, there's a lot. We got to go over with NFL games this uh, <laughs> this past week. Um, I'm a little disappointed. Well, a lot of disappointed hmm. in some things. Um, so, Alex, if you want to kick us off with whatever you would like to talk about first. Okay. Um. I actually don't have really have anything to talk about. I just got one one thing to talk about that I have written down. Um, I know every year you uh you like to to bitch and moan about these ridiculous like rules that the NFL has and all these stupid fines they give some of these players. Here I got one for you. So I can't remember which player it was. I'd have to pull it up. But the NFL fined a Saints player. For doing a Michael Jackson-inspired move after a touchdown. That's fucking ignorant. $14,000. Because he did a crotch grab. <laughs> I, knew, I knew exactly what move it was before I read the article, too. It was the crotch grab. And I'm like... <laughs> Nothing, dude. That's stupid. I, I understand why they probably did it. Probably because copyright bullshit. Well, they, um, I think they want to maintain... Michael Jackson literally runs the world. I... See, I think they find him because they want to retain a family-friendly image, and then all the fucking fans are throwing fists at each other. Like, yeah, that's real family-friendly. There's nothing family-friendly about any entertainment business. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's not. Listen, I'm just gonna straight up say, even YouTube Kids is bad for you. So, yeah, like, it there's is. nothing entertainment business that is going to be family-friendly. I okay? agree. So. Get that shit the hell out of here. That's so, all I yeah, had. I don't agree with that. Um, I do, since you want to bring up fines right away, uh, Darwin James got uh, suspended a game. Again, here it is. The Chiefs <laughs> game. I'm starting to get pissed off with the fucking Chiefs. I'm literally starting to, like, dislike football. I... I, I want to say that I'm going to say this probably every podcast we ever. I played football for 13 years. I love the game of football. I've always loved it. I would love. I would love to have a do, uh, daughter. Sorry, I would love to have a son that played. Um, but I have a daughter. I'm not going to deny her to play, but I just don't feel like that's going to be a thing she wants to do, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, my thing is though, with these NFL games. I'll get to the Chiefs here in a second. They just pissed me off right now. Like, totally pissed me off. But the Darwin James hit. Um, Alex, I don't know if you can actually find that. That'd be cool if you could and bring it up on the screen. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I would have to. That's a whole mess of things that I have to do. Yeah, so anyway, uh, the hit. Just look it up. Darwin James hit on um, a tight end. I can't remember the dude's name. Um, it's just ignorant. I mean, the guy was going in for a tackle. I don't agree he should be suspended. I don't agree he should be fined. But the fact, I, I know why they suspended him, because here we are again. The Chargers next game, because he's on the Chargers. The Chargers next game is the fucking Kansas City Chiefs. So, I, 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 I don't know, dude. I, that just pisses me off, because he shouldn't have been suspended finding him one thing okay we want to find him the guy from the saints should have been fined and suspended he hit Devonte smith really hard and i mean i wouldn't agree with both of them i honestly wouldn't have uh they both were going in for a tackle football actions is going to happen it is literally the game right. of hitting people like you are literally you are getting hit Every single play. And if you don't get hit, you got lucky. That's it. That's yeah. literally it. 
So I just don't agree. I don't know. Like I said, if you guys look it up, look the video up, you understand. And since we were already kind of on the subject of the Chiefs, uh, we'll talk about that a little later. We'll just have that as one of the games I want to talk about. Because, oh, you know, I always pick two games, two or three games to talk about. So we'll pick that game for later. Um, if you want to go ahead with the injury report. Oh, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know if you wanted to do injury first or if you wanted to kind of do a recap of last week. Uh, yeah, actually, that would be all right. We'll do a recap. Okay, so this is what I figure we'll, we can do from here on out. We'll start at the first game. We'll just kind of say who won, who who, well, who we had winning, I guess, that game. And if you have any comments about that game. Okay, let's go through it. So first game was uh, Patriots at Jets. We both had the Jets winning, and they did win. Freaking... Aaron freaking Rodgers, baby. Yeah, they they said that he uh he actually did really good that game. So that's all I gotta say about okay. that. Okay, Aaron freaking uh, Rodgers. Giants at Browns. We actually both had the Browns winning, and the Giants actually pulled a win out on that one. Yeah, surprisingly, surprisingly, Daniel Jones did good that game. But he has that like one or two games. That's why they paid him the big bucks last year. He has like a one or two games where he actually like stands out. So we'll yeah. see if he keeps it up. Um, but the Browns just the Browns are being the Browns this year. I mean, that's yeah. Last year they were good. This year they're just like, oh, uh, you're 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 back to what you were many years ago. <laughs> like they're back to being yeah. the Browns. Dude. <laughs> um. Next game was Packers at Titans, and we both had the Packers winning. Packers did pull out a win on that one. I'm telling you right now, that game did not surprise me one bit. It's not because of Will Levis at all. I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna knock Will Levis, um, even though he sucks. <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> knock him, but he sucks. Uh, I'm gonna butcher his first name. Malik Willis, the Malik, quarterback. Yeah, Malik. That dude is is something else right now. That guy, I'm going to tell you right now, Jordan Love better watch the fuck out because... Yeah, the little comment that, uh, the little comment that ESPN has uh, on the side of that game says, Malik Willis shows the Titans what they gave up. Yeah, so <laughs> he was with the Titans last year or whatever. But my, my, my issue is with Jordan Love, sorry, Jordan Love's Great quarterback. I'm I'm not gonna knock Jordan Love because yeah. I didn't think they were gonna be winning without Jordan Love. Right. But the fact that now Jordan Love or Malik is two and zero. Yeah. Hey, dude. Hey, listen. I am always. I will always be down for a dual threat quarterback. Yes, you'll hear me hate on Lamar Jackson, but that's because he gets too much love on the MVP stage. Right. Status. Right. <laughs> But that dude is an elite quarterback. Right. Lamar Jackson is elite. He can't win the big game, so he's not. I don't. I'll call him elite, only because he did very good last year. He did do. But he still failed to get to the Super Bowl. But he's on the AFC side. So what does that mean? He's got to go through Patrick Mahomes and the refs. Yep. Just saying. The only reason they lost that game last year in the playoffs was because of the fucking... They stopped running the goddamn ball like a bunch of fucking idiots. So, for Malik Willis to come in here for the Green Bay Packers and actually, like... Uh, dude, he's like... That dude's fried right now. Right. He's a dual-threat quarterback, and that makes... That makes the defense think twice of what they're going to do. Look at Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson... I mean, they're scary to go against because they can run, they can yeah. pass. So, I don't know. I really like Malik Willis, and I, I wouldn't be shocked <clears throat> to see Jordan Love come back and lose the game. And then they're like, wait a minute. Yeah, right. I honestly could see it. I, I honestly could see it. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he might. he could be back next week. Um, from what I've been seeing, um, and that's going to be tough because he's coming back again. If he does come back next week, he's coming back against the Vikings, and that's going to be scary. Yeah, that is scary. So he needs to win that game. To me, 
to me personally, and I mean I'm not a I'm not a 24/7 sports analyst like I want to be, but he he has to win that game. The fact that Malik Willard they they came in here thinking that we're they're not going to win till Jordan Love comes back. The fact that Malik is two and zero, yeah. And right now, Jordan Love's technically zero and one. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's, that's saying something. Yeah. So it's it's got to be a standout game. Um, next game was the Bears at the Colts. You had the Bears winning, and I had the Colts, so I made out one up on that one. Uh, yeah, Caleb Williams suck. Okay, <laughs> listen. Uh. I had them winning only because of the defense, not because of Caleb Williams. But I wish I could have. I, I, I'm so into football. I don't write stuff down while I'm watching. Like, I'm, like, pumped up. Yeah. Face green. I got three TVs, guys. It's not your, jo- it's not your job. It's not your job. Like, it's not your full-time job to sit there and make sure you're writing things I'm down. Taking, having a good time. Yep. But, like, it, he sucked. Caleb Williams <laughs> suck. I mean, and, and, uh, score wise, I, score wise, it was. I mean, well, it was almost not, a touchdown, but yeah, but I mean, Houston against Houston beat the hell out of the Colts. Right. The score was only by one or two points. My thing is with that was Houston beat them up. They only gave up two big plays. That's the only reason they were in the game. This game, the Bears should have won it. Like, I just, anyway, Caleb Williams went 33 of 52 with 363 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. That's sad. Yeah. That's, that's not good. Like, that's not a, that's not what you want to see. Um, but what stood out to me about that game was when Caleb, excuse me, when Caleb Williams would overthrow his receiver, it wasn't, it wasn't like he was overthrowing them by a little bit. This this ball was sailing like DJ into, Moore, into space. <laughs> yeah, DJ Moore actually gave up on one of the throws That's because it was bad. so far out of reach. Like he's That's he literally he literally slowed down and turned around before the ball hit the ground. Like. He he overthrew this dude by a mile, and I just I I counted at least six times he's done this, Holy. and I just don't. It might have been more, but like I just when he would overthrow them, I mean it was it was by a mile. Like I I don't understand. And watching him during preseason, he was he was decent. Like right. he was. There was a couple throws I seen in preseason, like, damn, dude, that's a that's a damn good throw. But then I seen this, I'm like, what happened? What the, what the fuck? And a lot of them, a lot of them receivers were wide open when he missed them. I I will say, out of the six that I know for sure, out of the six overthrown balls I've seen for sure, at least three of them, the dude was wide open. It would have been an easy six. Touchdown! It it would have been a Bears win, but he—I mean—he just bombed it. So ready for the next the Colts, one? Oh, yeah, the Colts did surprise me, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, the next game was Texans at Vikings. You got that one right. The Vikings definitely won, and then I had the Texans. I had no, a- I had the Texans. I was on Texans all day long. Oh. Now, I ain't going against CJ Stroud. Are you kidding me? Well, then what the hell do I have? You obviously I, wrote I don't down, think right? I don't think I highlighted. I think you, you probably did. didn't. Okay, well, then that changes well, your... You think, you think I picked it? I know I picked the Texans. I thought the Texas defense was going to kill the Vikings, but uh, well, then that makes it was, you. It was the complete opposite. They got killed. Sam Darnold four touchdowns. Like what, dude? All right. Well, then I had to change your. Okay, I'm good then. So neither of us got that. Okay. 
Yeah, that one actually was a very listen. I if I expected the Texans to lose, I thought they wouldn't have been losing by that much. Like they they lost. Yeah, they did lose. It was pretty big margin there. So yeah, that one was a surprise. Um, I didn't I I just didn't think they were gonna lose by <laughs> all the points. Yeah, like a few touchdowns. <laughs> um. Next game was Eagles at Saints. You had the Eagles, and I had the Saints, so. Yeah, I just feel like the momentum from them. That's fair. Was gonna. Um, was gonna carry it over. Right, are you sure I had the Eagles? I didn't highlight it. I was highlighting all the ones that you had the opposite answer to. I'm going to look at my bet right now. Yeah, look at your bet. I'm starting to think you're not writing these down correctly. Okay, there's Garrett Wilson on here. It's 11 pick. I had the Saints, like I thought. Well, I must have been high not... on something. Cause... Why don't you do what I told you to do? Just write both teams who they're going against. Fucking weirdo. Your system's not working, Alex. Yeah, I'd say. I don't know. I don't know what I did that... Or you're not paying attention, which I, that's probably the, the case. All right, well... I would, I would go with that more than anything. I'm I'm just not gonna <laughs> say, I'm just not gonna say who picked what. I can tell you who I picked and you tell me who you picked. Alright. Yeah, that one wasn't a surprise to me. I, I knew that was gonna be a tough game. Um Barkley's just I liked him on the Giants and then he went to the Eagles and now I'm not a Barkley fan because he's an Eagle guy, but I still <laughs> have a little love for the Barkley, you know? Um he did go to the, one of the best offensive lines there is, so I I wouldn't see why a, a great running back like him would wouldn't do well. Oh damn, I'm tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> um next you game <laughs> Next game I have is the Chargers versus the Steelers. That game shocked me, but then fucking Herbie got hurt, which I oh man. I hope he's okay. And uh, Joe Alt got out there starting left tackle. Um, that game actually pissed me off. Again, I'm not a Steelers fan. So they, need, they need to lose here soon. Because I'm tired of the whole being undefeated shit. But, like, I thought the only reason the Chargers were going to win now was coming down to the coaching. And the fact, I mean, they're going, it, it was defense versus defense in that game, honestly. It was the fucking. There's two defenses going head to head like that. That there's two of the strongest defenses right now, I think, in the league. Um, and again, the Darwin James hit just that shit just pisses me off, dude. There's no way he should have got suspended for that next game. Um, the dude was just going. Listen, you're a small safety trying to tackle a fucking three hundred pound tight end. I'm going to tell you right now, a 200-pound guy going against a 300-pound guy at full speed, who's winning that battle? Yeah. So, I mean, he's not, the tight end wasn't like, he's not like 200 or 300 pounds, but you get my drift. I mean, when the dude's moving at full speed, it's just hard to. Okay, now who did you have winning that? I had the Chargers. Okay, so I did get that one right. Okay. So yeah, I had the Steelers winning that one. I don't know. I figured Justin Fields was starting again, so. I... <laughs> well, he's bound to lose one uh, he here, is, and that's he where is. that's where the that's where the the debate's going to come from. Is oh well, maybe we should put Russell Wilson in. Dude's three and zero right now. Like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, right. Um, next match was Broncos at at Buccaneers. <laughs> I, I had the Bucks winning, and they obviously did not win. Yeah, that was uh honestly that was a shocker. That's actually a shocker for me because 
Hold on, I'm looking at something here. Yeah, can okay. uh, I don't know. I just I had the box winning because Baker Mayfield, like, but I mean, Bo Nix showed off his true talent from his college days. So, and I know like younger people, like younger quarterbacks, it's going to take them time to develop because they don't have that development in college no more. The college is just there to win games now. You're just there to win games. They're not trying to teach you anything in college, just develop. Yeah. So, like, a lot of these college quarterbacks now are coming into the NFL and they're, like, getting hit with shit. Like, what the hell is this? So, um, it's a big learning curve. And it's going to take them a couple games. So, the fact that, you know, they won kind of surprises me. But I didn't have them winning. Uh, But, I don't know. Like I said, it's going to take them – it's going to take him a minute to get in the swing of things. Four field goals probably helped. I mean, getting yeah. him down in the field goal range. Um, but, yeah, Bo Nix, he did – I don't want to say he did outstanding, but he did He did what he needed to do. Um, next match was Panthers at Raiders. I had the Raiders uh, winning that. I was actually kind of surprised – a little surprised about – the way that that ended. You didn't have the Raiders winning that. I had the Raiders winning that. But Andy Dalton again. It must be a week three thing for Andy Dalton. Because he did this last year at week three. Andy Dalton comes in there. Throws for 319 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns. Like, yeah. He threw for three touchdowns last year at week three. So, I don't know. Um, Again, it's one of those rookie quarterback things. Where Bryce Young... Was a quarterback. Andy Dalton comes in as a replacement because Bryce Young's not winning the games. They need to develop Bryce Young. They need to have him learn before they just throw him in and say, you're the starter. Like it, It's hard for a rookie just to come in there and do that. Um, Dolphins at Seahawks. I had the Dolphins winning. I'm not surprised that they didn't win, though. So I had the Seahawks. Yeah, I was gonna say you did have the Seahawks. Like I, I don't mind. I don't mind uh, Thompson, but he's he's coming in one week of practice, and it's like the Seahawks are just hot right now, and it's not good because that's in the 49ers division. Um, let me see. Ravens at Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> we both had. Yeah, I was to say we both had the Ravens winning that. So that was a hell of a game, though. Last four or yeah, fourth quarter, ten minutes remaining, and they almost come back. Yeah, that's yeah. Ravens, you almost choked that shit. No. You almost choked that shit. Bro. Um, Not cool. Lions at Cardinals. We both had the Lions winning that, so. I'm not going against Dan Campbell. Yeah, I know. That... Dan Campbell suit, baby. And then, uh, Chiefs at Falcons. I had the Chiefs winning. I just, I had a feeling, so. Sorry. I know the Falcons are, like, your second team, but. What? Spotify, you can't see what I just did right now, but I was just blinking a lot because that game's bullshit and it should be erased. It should be nullified. It should redo it. <laughs> Rematch. I had Falcons because of Kirk Cousins in prime time. And I tell you right fucking now, they should have won that game. It was. Prime I mean, time should have showed up. He did show up. Yeah, prime right. time would have won the game. But go on, because that's the game I'm going to be talking about. Okay. Uh, Jaguars at Bills. <laughs> the Bills absolutely destroyed the Jaguars. Shout out to Ty Johnson. Ty Johnson got a ball. Got a ball. Got a ball. Bruh. You're so, you're such a nerd. <laughs> he got a touchdown pass from Josh Allen, dude. Like, come on now. I, I felt like Josh Allen that game that was like, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. Yeah, get Oprah, a touchdown. the Oprah of NFL. <laughs> like, you get a touchdown, and you get a touchdown. <laughs> You're right. Some of the people 
started catching catching a ball, I was like, who the fuck is that? Like, who the fuck's Ray Davis? <laughs> he, I don't know just, who Ray Davis actually was. Josh Allen was just throwing the ball and hoping someone was catching it. <laughs> he saw blue uh, and was like, yep. <laughs> well, Ray Davis ran for a touchdown, sorry, but like, you got, I mean, I knew, I knew Kincaid, I knew Johnson, I knew, but I didn't know Coleman, like, I, I don't know where Coleman came from. He got one touchdown for 24 yards with a touchdown. Um, last game was Commanders at Bengals. We both had the Bengals winning that, and I feel like they probably should have. I don't know enough about the Commanders, though, so. I don't know. Jaden Daniels looking mighty fine. He's the number two overall pick. Just saying. All right, do me a favor here, babe. Go down. Do you still have your picks up from DraftKings for that week? No. Oh. I was going to say, tell me, go through all your picks for me. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick, uh, is showing up Mr. Caleb Williams right now, dude. Uh, Jaden Daniels is looking good. Uh, but I want to talk about that game a little bit because they actually broke a. I guess it was a, not really a record. Uh, that game didn't have, and I can't remember the year. I'm trying to find a year here. That game actually broke. Let's see if it says it here. They didn't have no turnovers. Or I think punts in that entire game. Which is like the first time since like 84, I think they said. Damn. I'm trying to find the, the actual stat line here, but I'm not. Yeah, a lot of people are blown away by Jane Daniels' performance. And I mean, I fuck him. I am, dude. Uh, but yeah, that, here, let me just look it up. Let's see. And I kind of want to do an overreact. Not overreact, but a... Uh, the teams who should be worried about not making playoffs and shit. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Uh, 84 year league record dating back to 1940. Let's see. It was. The last game that had no turnovers and no punts. That's crazy, dude. First NFL game since 1940 with no turnovers or punts. Yep, there it is. Tonight's Commanders Bengals was the first NFL game since 1940. Dude, that's a fuck. That's crazy to me. Like, you're watching it, you just don't think of that stuff. Right. Like, oh. And then they tell you right after the game, like, oh, yeah, this broke a record. And, like, you know, people are on top of that shit, which is cool. But 84-year record. That's insane. And just think, the quarters and stuff got longer since then, so. Yeah. The fact that that was an 84-year-old record is, is kind of mind-boggling. 
All right, are we talking about games now? Uh, yeah. What's uh, what's on the agenda? Well, I yeah, have... uh, yeah. Rams lost or Rams won. Everybody, fuck you. Party did great. Okay, I do want to talk <laughs> about that game just because we're we're forty nineers people here. We're one and two. Okay, Brock Purdy, two hundred ninety-two yards, three touchdowns. Motherfucker went off, dude. He, he needs some help right now. Um, good news is he is fully cleared for practice. Uh, whatever was wrong with his back, maybe it was just carrying the fucking team. Uh, but no, that that should that comeback should not happen. It was I, I'm going to blame the defense, Ronnie Bell. Well, let me just go from from worse to better. I want to. I want to place the blame on the kicker because, again, I've said this before. Moody, nothing against you. Too much, not too much against you because you did help win us a, a game in the earlier season already with six field goals. But you can't hit the clutch field goals, dude. You need to hit the clutch. I don't care if you hit six motherfucking field goals in the fucking first half. You need to hit the game winners. You need to hit the game tire. You need to hit the game ceiling. I don't care about the rest. You need to hit the ones that matter the most. So, fuck, man. I wanted to like you so bad, but now you're starting to piss me off. Ronnie Bell, you can't have that many drop passes, my guy. You're a wide receiver. The last wide receiver that had that many drop passes is now sitting the bench somewhere. And I don't even know his name. He came from Kansas City from last year. Uh, and then you got uh, the defense. Dude, the defense. I went from worst to least worst, actually. The defense, you cost the game up, dude. You, you gave away a fucking play that put him in a scoring position. What, what are we doing, man? Ah, fuck! Ignorant motherfuckers. You know, that's the first time Purdy lost against an NFC team that wasn't the Vikings. So you fucked his record up. He was 0-2 against the Vikings, but he won every other game against the fucking NFC side, and now he lost against the Rams. You guys are assholes for that. Just saying. All right, we're on to the Kansas City game because that game pissed me off more than any other game the entire Sunday. Mm-hmm. Last week, Kansas City went against the Bengals. Now, do I think the Chiefs should have won that game? Yes. Before you guys sit there and think, Oh, that dude just hating on the fucking Chiefs because he's a he doesn't like Mahomes or he doesn't like listen, I think Mahomes is a great quarterback. I'm not a biased guy. I think he's a great quarterback. Okay. I don't hate him because he might be the next Tom Brady. I hate him because you're putting him in that conversation of Tom Brady. Tom Brady played a harder game where pass interference wasn't what it was like it is nowadays. Where the push-out rule wasn't a thing. See, people don't think about the rules that have changed since Tom Brady came into the league. Roughing the passer changed while Tom Brady was in the game still. But when he started, roughing the passer wasn't what it was. Uh, Like going low. Okay, going low on the quarterback wasn't a thing until Carson Palmer got hurt. So, to stop putting Patrick Mahomes in that category, and I would like Patrick Mahomes more. I'm not saying he's not going to be one of the greatest of all times, but you've got to put them in the era that they were winning in. That's all I'm asking. But the fact that the, they won that game against the Bengals, I understood that. It was pass interference at the end of the game. It was the Bengals' fault. He shouldn't have done what he did, but he did, and they, they cost him the game. Fast forward to the Falcons game. Now, I'm going to lay out the pass interference rule for you as simple as I could possibly lay it out for you. Okay? One of the things in the pass interference rule book is, in the article of pass interference, is if the defender does not look for the ball. Okay? Now, I want to repeat that. 
if the defender does not look for the ball. That means if the defender's head is facing the receiver the entire time and never looks back for the ball, that is a clear and cut pass interference. Okay, let's move to the next section. Contact made while the ball is in the air. That means the ball is now in the air out of the quarterback's hand. It's in God's air right now. Contact made while the ball is in the air is pass interference that makes the receiver unable to catch the ball. So that's saying if you are touching or grabbing his arm where he can't reach up and catch the ball, that is now pass interference. So I laid that out as smooth as I could for you. For everybody to understand. So I'm not going to be called a hater of the Chiefs. The last play. Well, I shouldn't say the last play of the game. But that pass interference that should have been called in the end zone. The guy, first off, never looked for the ball. And blatantly tackled the dude while he was in the air. That pisses me off the most. Because the Chiefs got it, got the call for them in the Bengals game. But then when they do it to some other team, they didn't get the call at all. And the, again, the reason that pisses me off the most is because it happened between the umpire and one of the field judges. It happened in between two fucking refs, dude. And you can't make that call? Like, that is a blatant missed call to me. That was a purposely missed call. The only thing the referees have to do is watch the fucking ball. Dude, that's their only fucking job. Okay? The guy in the back behind the fucking... And I'm cussing a lot because this just pisses me off. They're ruining the game of football. The guy... The referee behind the quarterback... The only thing he's watching for is holding, okay? Holding, illegal blocks, anything like that. Hands to the face. The guys on the side, the side judges, they're watching for offsides. They're watching for illegal hands. They're watching for pass interference. But every ref has something in common. They got to watch the ball, where the ball goes. So you have all these refs. Watching this ball. And you see this guy getting tackled. Man, are you kidding me? Like, it just gives me a headache. Because I played and loved this game for 13 years of my life. I wish I could have went somewhere more with it. I should have went somewhere more with it. I should have even been a sports analysis and shit like that. But I just never pursued that stuff. So the fact that they're ruining this game by blatant missed calls. It, it, it hurts me to watch football anymore. I don't even want to watch the Chiefs no more. Because you might as well just mark them down as a fucking win. And like I said, should they won the Bengals game? Sure. Was they missed calls before that? Sure. Both sides had missed calls. This one was just a blatant one because that would have been a one-yard line, automatic first down. They could have... Hell, they could have fucking needed a couple of times. Who knows? Like, they could have ran a time down if they really wanted to. Made Kansas City blow their timeouts. And then give it to Bijan and say, you better score here, motherfucker. And, I mean, I think Bijan's scoring. But I, I just... The game changes too much. If they're going to have replay assist on some of these calls, they need replay assist on every call. That's all I got to say. I, that game just pissed me off because, again, it was a blatant missed call. And Atlanta should have won. So. Are you good? 
Yeah, I had to get that off my chest because it's bullshit. <laughs> I mean, everyone in America was watching that game. <laughs> that was a Sunday night game. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that the owner of I do have to shout this out. I thought this was cool. I I seen an article. I don't know how true it is that uh, the owner of I think his name's Arthur Smith. Uh, of the Falcons was giving out free hot dogs and shit that day, wow. and Mercedes Benz Stadium, I was told, is one of the best stadiums in the league, and they got the foot long hot dogs. So if they were giving out foot long hot dogs for free. Yeah, seriously. Thanks to you guys, like I love that from from a fan perspective. That shit is dope. Keep doing that shit. Well, I think so. Just, just this is kind of off topic. It still kind of pertains to just that. I think it was the pa- the Panthers. I think all their food is really cheap at the stadium, and I know it's the Panthers. Are you good? <laughs> I wonder why they're cheap. Well, I Fucking know, but like twenty five dollars, dude. Like, I know, just... but, but people people were saying they could still charge stadium prices for the food, regardless of ticket prices, and they don't. They choose not to, so. They can. I don't care. Listen, I don't care who you are. They can't charge stadium prices. Last year when there was literally nobody in the stands, can't charge stadium prices for food because nobody's buying it. Wow. Yeah, that's you know true. what? I only pay 25 bucks to see my team get their ass kicked. I'm just going to go ahead and head out. Like, <laughs> there, like you're losing already in halftime. Like, you know, you're I... never coming back. So, like, I don't know. I just now their ticket prices might go up thanks to Andy Dalton. He might as well just give that dude a raise. <laughs> oh Jesus! Any other games you want to talk about? No, I just wanted to talk about that one because that one pissed me off the most. That's fair. Oh, so, um, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, Cody Rhodes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what's the? Did you got the overall record and shit then? I do. Hopefully I have yours marked up right this time. So, this past week, Chris is sitting at 7 and 8 for this last week. Yeah, you went from 10, yeah, 10 and 5 to 7 and 8 because I can't, I can't do my stuff. And I'm still sitting for the third week in a row at an 8 and 7. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm being very consistent with my picks apparently. Wow. So. So what's the uh, what's the season overall so far? Oh Jesus! You want me to do math? We should have an overall up on the screens. What we should do? Yeah, that's probably not so a bad much idea. Easier. Um, It'd be so much easier to have that. I have to do math. Hold on. That's seventeen. Twelve. Ooh. Twenty-one. You're 28 and 17. Yeah, you're. Yeah. And I am 24. No. Yeah. 24, 21. I'm going to say, do math. Sorry, you yeah, I was. Three weeks in a row. I know. Times three. <laughs> math Seven is times not my three. strong suit. Wow. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. I guess you want to. We want to talk about injuries now. Yeah, we can do like a quick, quick well, overall. I, real quick. I, I've got, I've got quite a few actually that stuck out to me. At no, least to me. Like talk about them. Uh, first one I have on my list is Trent Brown. What are you gonna talk about him? Oh, I, I don't know. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about him or not. Just says he requires season-ending surgery to repair a torn patellar tendon. Yeah, Ouch. he was, uh... Yeah, that's gonna suck for the Bengals, I think, but... I mean... Uh, Lyman go down quite a bit. Right. Uh, next one on my list is Tank Dell. After taking a hit to the ribs. Just says he's sore. Doesn't really say much much else. Just saying he's sore. But he's questionable. Yeah, that in there could impact him a lot, but... 
Um, the next one I have, and there really wasn't any, just says questionable. There was no other comments, is Joe Mixon. And all it says is questionable. And we still got, so 49ers injury, right? We still got Debo out. We got Christian McCaffrey still oh, out. Just hold on. I, don't worry. I have a list for the 49ers. The 49ers have their own goddamn list this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just. Um, Cooper Cup with his ankle just says out. At least yeah, for... his ankle's probably going to take a while, I'd say. Um, I have, so before you say anything, I have Russell Wilson on this list again. Only because there's an update. They're letting him practice, limited practice, but they're still preparing for Justin Fields to be a starter again. So he must, R Russell must not still be in the correct shape yet. Yeah. They're just collecting that insurance money off them, guys. <laughs> um. Okay, and then now we have our 49ers list. Um, uh, Drake Greenlaw. Yeah, he's still... I, I figure he's come back mid-season because of his Achilles. Says October 20th he's due to come back, is what they're saying. Or that's what they're hoping. You know, it's something that someone can hurt their Achilles and come back. But yet, when Achilles got his Achilles heel cut, he died. Like, you know. <laughs> It makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> it's we've, so come nice. a, we've come a long way in in the medical world. Yeah, I was gonna say it seems like the the medical field wasn't ready for the Achilles heel. No. <laughs> um, Justin Hargrave out for season. Yeah, it says That's it says he's due back to he's due to come back February tenth. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, partially torn right That'd tricep. That'd be the Super Bowl, I'd say, huh? That'd be the Super Bowl if he came back. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I don't know when the Super Bowl is this year, actually. Uh, George Kittle. Uh, with his hamstring. But they're hoping he practices this week, so... I don't feel like George Kittle's the kind of guy that likes to he sit back around. Back February 10th, you said? Yeah. That's the day after the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's rough. I see what they did there. They were saying it's... I see what they were doing. And then the last person I have is Brock Purdy, questionable with his back. So, yeah, he was, uh, he was in... He was full participating in... Practice today, so okay, I think that's good. I think he was just like I said, I think he was just tired of carrying the team on his back. Uh, <laughs> You're probably right. With another update on the 49ers, Christian McCaffrey going all the way to Germany for a fucking hey. specialist on his Achilles. And I like what Barstool Sports had to say it's like, hey, if he comes back magically from an Achilles tear, you might want to drug test his ass. <laughs> From Germany, like that dude, like, hey, medicine has came a long way yeah. and stuff. I mean, we'll see. We will see. Um. All right. Well, we're done talking about injuries. We can do our little game. If you're ready, I'm sure you are. Yep. All right. Time to play the game. <laughs> Time to play the game. Time to play the game. Um, so for anyone new, this is a little game we play. It's not really a game, but I call it a game. Go through each game of the upcoming NFL week. I have my picks written down. I make Chris pick. And we just see we just see who has the better score by the end of the week. What the hell are you doing? I'm just laughing. He's huffing beer. He's huffing beer. Yeah, I'm just laughing at the first game you're gonna name. That's all. I, I just, I'm just here for the. Oh fun. yeah, I actually can't wait to hear some of these picks because even I on some of these was like, um. <laughs> so first game, Cowboys at Giants. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know, like. <laughs> 
That's why I'm dying. I'm over here. I've been staring at this Cowboys Giants game for the last like hour, oh trying God. to decide who I'm gonna be. Scoring football game and do do you, you want to come back to this one? Well, I'm also <laughs> laughing because ESPN bet they have their own bet betting website. Yeah. They only have Dallas by six. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> like this is supposed to be one yeah. of the top you know, games. You know, the- you know what's gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen. Dallas is gonna score a touchdown, miss the field goal, and that's gonna be the game. <laughs> uh, I just know they're not missing a field goal. They're, they're they're number one fucking scoring guy right now is Brandon Aubrey. Brandon's oh not missing. God. All right, well, you better pick a team then. I just, he, he's gonna kick two field goals. That's what the spread's gonna oh be. Oh my god. I can't. Because they sure as hell, they sure as hell can't find the end zone. Um, <laughs> oh my it's god! Hurt me to say this, and I hope I'm wrong. This is the only games where I hope I'm fucking wrong. But I am picking the Cowboys. Okay. This. I feel like, and I gotta talk about this first for people that don't know. This is our fifth episode on the podcast. I would love to make this podcast go further and bigger and everything else. But my guy, Micah Parsons, from the Cowboys, quit your fucking podcast and focus on winning your game. All I think he cares about right now is his fucking podcast. You want to sit there and you want to bash all these people and say all this shit. You are one and fucking two right now. You just got your fucking ass beat in by the Saints. And then uh, last week you lose to the fucking Ravens, which, again, Ravens is a good team. I understand. You lost. But Jesus Christ, getting your ass beat in in the first half of the game actually first three quarters of the game quit your fucking podcast and focus on your team dude just saying yeah you're you not can have, you can have a free life you're i'm not, not saying jason, you you're, you're, you're not jason kels who has now has the time yeah to do a so, podcast. <laughs> travis kels is doing it he's three and though dude you get your priorities yeah, straight but, That's y- yes hey. but he hasn't really been at Shown, he's really not showing up at the games either, so I can't really listen. And th- this is gonna, this might get some hate, but the defensive players have to be more ready than anybody on that fucking team besides a tight end. I'm That's sorry, fair. you can sit there and you can bash me all day long. A tight end's job is to get open, block, catch the ball. Yeah, a defensive guy, Micah Parsons, a linebacker, his, his job is one of the hardest in the league. Focus up. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I hope you don't focus up. I'm just saying, priorities. Priorities, man. One and two. When your team is getting their ass pounded, yes, I think you need to... I'm not saying you can't have a freedom in your life. Don't don't get me wrong, but like I seem like it's, it, he's more focused on his podcast. Right. You're getting your ass pounded. You need to take away the loop, man. Exactly. Like Stop, stop giving them a reason to. Um. So yeah, I'm going. I'm still going with Cowboys. Okay. Uh, I feel like they're just pissed off and they need to win. Next game starting on Sunday is Saints at Falcons. Yeah, some of these matches, these matchups were kind of hard. See, this is like it's divisional week almost for some of these games. Okay. Like, Cowboys and Giants, they're in the same division. Saints and Falcons, they're in the same division. Man. Divisional games always go... Not the way you think. (laughs) No, they're just tough because you see them twice a year. So you play this team more times than you any other team. And you need to win your division. So it's like... You're really trying. Is it Mercedes? I'm saying Falcons win this. Falcons win. They looked good against the Super Bowl team. And I just feel like, yeah, I'm going with Kirk okay. on this one. Okay. Uh, Rams at Bears. <sighs> Rams at Bears. The Bears. 
That's tough. Uh, I'm going to say the Rams, and I'm going to say that because I feel like Sean McVay is a better coach. Okay. And, yeah, I feel like it's going to come down to the coaching. Okay. If it's if it's raining that day, though, I, I could see the Bears winning. Um, the Vikings at Packers. This was yeah, a, another, that was a tough one for me, game. too. Well, it's another divisional game. We're at Green Bay now. Yeah. Uh, and I hate to go with the Vikings all the time because they're bound to lose one here. You know what? I keep going against the Vikings. I'm going to go with them. Okay, so you're, you're saying the Vikings are going to win that one? Yeah. Okay. Um... Next game is Steelers at Colts. Steelers are winning that. That was actually kind of easy one for me, I think. Okay. Um. The defense is just too strong. Broncos at Jets. Jets are winning that. Okay. Uh, Eagles at the Buccaneers. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah, that one was tough for me too. If Barkley doesn't have a good game. Mm. Yeah, that's tough, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? It's a fucking Baker Mayfield fest this weekend. You're going to say the Bucks are winning? Bucks are winning. Okay. Baker Mayfield going off. Okay. Um, Bengals at Panthers. <laughs> the battles... <laughs> The battle of the unbeaten and the shitty team. I'm going to have to go. I, you know what? I think Joe Burrow gets this one. Okay. So, Bengals winning. I can't, I can't go with the Bengals. They got, I mean, they're, they're going to get it together at some point, right? Like, we hope. <laughs> um, Jaguars at Titans, or Texans, not Titans. Jesus. Good Lord. I'm going against Houston. So CJ Stroud. Texans are winning. Yep. They're pissed off they lost last game, guaranteed. Okay. Uh Commander Commanders at Cardinals. 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 We're gonna skip over yeah, that. Jayden Daniels had a good one. Uh, yeah, Dayton Daniels did have a good game, but Kyler Murray, he's gonna show up at Glendale, Arizona. Okay. Um Browns uh, at Raiders. The Raiders. Okay. Raiders are okay. Chiefs at Chargers. <laughs> I, I again, it's a divisional game. I'm just gonna have to go with Chiefs on this one okay. again, just because they get all the they get all the fucking calls. I mean, okay. I, at this point in time, you just gotta go Chiefs. Okay. Um, Bills at Ravens. And Herbie's hurt too, so. Yeah, Bills at Ravens. I think that's going to be a pretty good. Hey, and that's a Sunday night game. Hey, hey, yes. hey. Hey, hey. Uh, fuck, dude. That's a bad that tough. Yeah, that was. That was tough for me, too. We are going to go with the Bills. The Bills? Okay. Uh, Titans at Dolphins. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> uh, dolphins. Okay, and then um, last game: Seahawks. Lions. Seahawks versus the Lions. Lions, they're at home. Okay, so out of all those games, we only picked four wrong or four different. A again, huh. uh, I had the Saints winning. Sorry. Who are they go against? The Falcons. Yeah, we see. Now, okay, now explain to me why you had the Saints win. Just because of their record? Well, you don't I, watch football like I watch football. I don't know. I, feel, I, I, hearing. I feel like I'm putting you on the spot now, bitch. I don't know. They're just on fire. I figure they were just going to keep going. So it's Falcons. Going and going and going and going. Falcons always just beat the Super Bowl team with, with, mind you, a bad no call. Okay, they should. They went on fourth and inches. They ran outside. They haven't been in that game against Kansas City. They could not run outside. 
They could not run outside. Fourth and inches, you get, you run outside. You couldn't run outside all game, and you run outside in a in the pit of a little moment there. Like <laughs> give the fucking ball to Kirk Cousins and see what he can do. Um, Kirky magic. I have. You're gonna laugh. <coughs> I have the Packers winning for the opposite reason. I think the Packers are going to break the streak. And I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with the Vikings losing. Well, I have the Steelers winning. Um, I I have the Bears winning. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I look I mean, they're, they're I mean, they're down. They should win. I mean, but I just feel like... Again, I was wrong with the Chargers game. I thought it was going to come down to the coaching on that, too. But yeah. I just feel like watching Caleb Williams ever throw his receivers that far, I just I can't go with Caleb Williams until I see improvement. Right. Like I, I'm sure he will improve. Don't get me wrong. They always do. But damn, dude, seven, at least six or seven overthrown passes by a mile. Like... Um, and then the last game, you, you answered this pretty quick and it made me, it made me anxious. I have the Browns winning. I just, their offense sucked. Or their, okay. yeah, all, their defense ain't doing too much. My, I haven't heard Miles Garrett in, I don't know how long. I haven't heard a fucking word from him. Um, They actually have, if you, ESPN bet does have uh, the Raiders winning. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, by two. Doesn't matter. The money line's minus 125. I know. I know. Match predictor, according to ESPN and Alec, uh, Analytics, they actually have 51% grounds. Okay. I just. For me to go with the Browns, they got to change quarterback. Okay, that's uh, that's fair. I mean, dude, sixty-seven of one hundred sixteen. Deshaun Watson assists, five hundred fifty-one yards, three touchdowns, two ints. Gardner Minshew is seventy-three of nine. Yeah, seventy-three of ninety-nine, seven hundred forty-seven yards, three TDs, three ints. So, the only thing that I think the Browns have against, yeah, against the Raiders is a running back. I mean, the running game's pretty. All that Jerome Ford is questionable. So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) I'm going to send you something real quick. I just just happened to see it, and it made me laugh. It's going to be tough, I think. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the Browns getting sacked, Deshaun Watson getting sacked all the time. That's not good. You got Max Crosby on the other side of that fucking offensive line. That that that's what should scare you. Let's see, does it show how many times he's I, been I sacked? Will say, this I will year say, I will say, I will say the Browns Raiders match was one that I like. I've had to pause and I had to be like, uh. Yeah, here we go. He's been sacked. What? <laughs> hey, just so you know, Brown's head coach, Stefanski, or however you say his name, says, we got to protect Deshaun Watson a lot more. I'm looking at the stats here. Last year, 2023, Deshaun Watson played six games. Six. That's five plus one. He was sacked 17 times. Holy shit! Six games. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. This gets way better now. Holy! He's played three games. He's been sacked 16 times in three games. You got Max Crosby on the other fuck, dude. Max Crosby's about to have himself a game. Um, Oops, you should probably be working on your defense if you're getting sacked. Uh, yeah, someone. That's bad. Games. That's <laughs> bad. You mean offensive line, but yes, 
you should definitely work on your offensive line if you're getting hey, sacked. Hey, hey, I, I don't <laughs> do not know football language, so shush. I'm gonna Max, have to Max Crosby's on defense. That's what scares. That's what should. I bet you right now, Deshaun's over there like this here, like. Oh, oh. <laughs> Listen, Max Crosby's one of the most scariest fucking linemen in the league, dude. I'm just telling. He's scary. That dude scares me. I look at him and I think he's from prison. That dude's from prison, dude. He's got tattoos all over him. He like that dude's scary as a motherfucker. He's one of them guys that would probably smoke a cigarette. And put it out on his cheek and not even flinch. Not like, even, that dude's yeah. fucking scary. So, yeah, Max Crosby's about to have a fucking game, dude. He is about to fucking he, he's gonna he's gonna break the sack record. Although he is questionable too. Oh well then. But I'd say I say he should be playing. I don't know. We'll see. You got any uh anything else you want to say about any of these games or just in general? Mm-hmm. Let me go back and look at the schedule. Like again, the whole Cowboys Giants one, man, that one scares me because last week Giants looked amazing. And while the Cowboys are the Cowboys. Right. Uh, I have to I have to mention what Dak Prescott said in the tunnel when he was walking off the field. He said, "Go ahead, jump off the bandwagon. Go ahead, jump off." The-. Dude, you're getting paid all this money, and you're one and two. Like, you and CD Lamb should be hooking up a lot more than you have been. I don't know. Uh, see again the Chiefs Chargers game. I think that's just that one's just gonna be annoying. The Bills and the Ravens are gonna be a good game. They have Baltimore winning. Oh, August interesting. Two. Yeah, it is actually kind of interesting. Did Josh hold the fuck up? Hold on. Well, I'm about to jinx Josh Allen, but he has not thrown one interception this year. Yeah, now he's gonna throw like three in this in this game. Well, the reason I'm saying this is he's been leading the league every year in interceptions. So for him to come out in his first three games and not throw any is with seven touchdowns. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I like my Bills. I love my Josh Allen. And the reason the reason I do like the Bills, because everyone doubted me when I said Josh Allen's going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time to get him a quarterback coach. He overthrew his receivers a little too much. Like, not like fucking Caleb Williams, but he was like, he would release it too early. So it would, like, fail just over their head. Got a quarterback coach, now look at him. So... All right, we can move on. All right, well. well. I would like to make the point that hockey is starting. Uh, not, mm, yeah, it's starting next week, so. Hockey. Yeah, and so our segments our segments might get a little longer because I also want to talk about some uh, eSports news because there's some big news coming up right now. We're in the off season. Um, as you guys know, I don't. You can't really see it in the background because I got everything blurred till I get everything situated and cleaned up in my room. Um, but I'm an optic fan. Okay, I've been an optic fan since G- Call of Duty Ghost, so like literally 2012. So I'm not a bandwagoner on that. So before anyone thinks and sits there, oh well, they won the championship. That's why. You, that's why. Yeah, you I can off. vouch for this man. He's been a fan of optics since I've known him. So. And I've known him for about seven years. Cause me, that's how long me and Alex have been together. So, so yes, I do want to talk about esports probably next week when I have more written, of the I have it written down then. Uh, mainly just the roster changes because there is going to be probably one of the strongest teams. I'm a little scared. 
So, well, we're we're starting hockey out with a big bang because week one there's twenty three games. So, <laughs> I, I'm yeah. sure I I think it'd be fun if because I have my predictions down. Megan put hers down. I figured we all could do it and do that like we do with the NFL. So, hell yeah. The only so, downside is that there are some longer. there are some hockey games on Wednesdays. Okay. I did not include those. I did not include those. I'll do those as the next week, but okay. Yeah, I have I have wrote a note here that says hockey starts next week. And there's a new team. Uh I did not know this until I was looking. There is a new hockey team this really? year. So yeah, Utah has a hockey team now. Utah? What? The Utah Mormons? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll admit they don't have a very creative name it's kind of it's like really that's all, that's all you could come up with they're called the the Utah, Utah, the, the, okay the Utah you... hockey club that's what oh, they're called okay well, you know sometimes sometimes that, boys better. that's my team fuck it i don't really really watch a lot of hockey but that's my team you know what i'm gonna start watching hockey this year Utah's going all the way. Hey, they're they're preseason right now. Okay. They are doing fantastic. So you know, I picked a good team then. No, I mean it'll be different once the season starts. But but my, my I never like really got. I like I watch hockey. I watch highlights. I don't watch the game. I watch highlights because I I do like sports. I'm a sports fiend. I quit watching a lot of basketball because basketball is starting to piss me off. It's all about, like, who can flop the best. I'm not into that shit, dude. I'm into, like, boxing, MMA, all that shit. So, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. You you guys heard it here first. I never really had a hockey team. I did, there's so many hockey teams. So I, I'm going with Utah. That's my team. Oh, Write it down. Who, are, who, are, who, who, who was it? What's the team name? Utah Hockey Club. Hockey Club, baby. Let's get it. Hopefully they change that shit up. God damn. God damn. You know what I mean? Listen, when I played hockey, like on, on video games, I will always just Detroit Red Wings because Eminem's from Detroit. Oh my right? God. Fuck you guys, all right? Just fuck you guys. This Eminem's from Detroit. That's why I was a Red Wing, dude. But I didn't really. I also like that uh, there's a Wolf team. Say No, Sabres. Who's the fucking Buffalo Sabres, ain't they? No. Uh... Arizona Coyotes. They're not a franchise anymore, though. Well, wasn't there a Saber team? Or yeah, there's a Saber team. Yeah, uh, you're you're right with that. Sabre. Okay, yeah, that's the one I like because I was like, yo, that's almost a dog. And I didn't really like Arizona. I don't like Arizona. I think their logo is different. I don't like that entire. I just don't like that entire state. Honestly, that entire state. Like, nah, I'm good. It's all cactuses and or cacti. Yeah, the Sabers sorry. are just Buffalo now. Okay. Buffalo, but see, I knew that. All right, so let's go Utah, baby. Let's get it. You obviously know my pick. Yeah, same. But <laughs> Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a big Capitals, probably, huh? Ew. Oh my god. Oh my god. Chris is gonna get served divorce papers. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit, dude. Uh, yeah, you know what? For podcast purposes, y'all might as well just tell them what your team is. I, I'll just say it's fucking Pittsburgh yeah, Penguins. Sure is. Penguins. The Penguins. Yeah, hold on, Pittsburgh hold on. Penguins. How does how does how does my main man Benedict call it? Pe- Penguins. That's how he says that. Penguins. Since we're making this an entire like sports podcast, <laughs> we should definitely start bringing in Supercross because I love dirt bikes. You're only dirt saying bikes. that because they're coming to Pittsburgh finally. Exactly, that's what I wanted to announce. They're coming to Pittsburgh for the first time in Acupuncture Stadium. Acupuncture. Heinz Field, motherfuckers. We don't change the name here because that's just what we do. I, I'm not an accurate. I don't even know what Accusure even is. It's an insurance company. It's an insurance for acupuncture, probably. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, are we on the fucking Beyond the Bell yet? Yes. <laughs> Oh, here we go with the Beyond the Bell segment. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> oh, you're dumb. <laughs> I know what I was about to do that too, bro. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we gotta. Okay, I gotta pull that up too. Huh? 
Actually, yeah. believe it or not, I was actually way more organized with this than I have been in the previous weeks. So, yo, all I know is Raw started off as a fucking banger, dude. I, I just want to say that you can, we can talk about anything you want to, but I just wanted to point that out before we got started on anything. Raw started out as a fucking banger, bro. Raw was the shit this week, dude. It was it was so fucking good this week. But, all right. All right. Alex, for, take us away. The first match of the night, and let me tell you, for SmackDown, they really started off with a bang, was L.A. Knight versus Apollo Crews. Oh. Oh. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, L.A. Knight won. Thank God. Yeah, no, obviously. I mean, figured. <laughs> um... I missed that most of that match. I caught caught the tail end of it, but because I think we were making dinner. Oh damn! So now, oh, wait a second here. I just I thought something seemed to miss when I was making my list. Did Apollo Cruz have two matches? Uh, he I don't he went, no, 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 LA Knight went against Andrade. Well, yeah, the, what the? I don't know. Bleacher Report had. He, they might they might have just I think they fucked up. That's all right. It doesn't matter LA Night won, so I'm a, I just go to WWE's website. See, yeah, I, I I guess I could do that. <laughs> but like after so we have to talk about this. So LA Night beats Andrade. That's awesome. Great way to start SmackDown. But then they drop a fucking bomb bigger than Hiroshima, dude. I, I I've been watching, uh, I've been watching WWE now for I'd say it'd be two years now. I started watching it kind of religiously, and all I have to say is I love the Wyatt Six. Okay, hell yeah! But this promo that was aired on SmackDown was the best promo. Dude, I got dude, you can ask Alex. I got so fucking pumped when this came on. I couldn't even talk. Dude, I was running back and forth. Okay. And the only time I run back and forth in my house is when football's on. So the fact that this shit, the Roman Reigns and Cody oh, yeah. promo oh, yeah. was the shit. Dude, I, I, I was so dude, I'm getting chills right now. It it had me fucking pumped up. Dude, they were in Georgia Tech Stadium. Apparently, they're both from Georgia Tech. Um, dude, I would just fucking Roman Reigns played college football. It seems like a lot of these play or these superstars play college football. Like, I don't know that promo. Uh, we can't show it. I mean, we can. We can show clips of it, but we don't have that on. So we're just gonna. I just gotta say, go watch that promo if you are a WWE. Like, Phenom, you need to see that shit. If you didn't see it, you need to go watch it. That was... Dude, it, I don't know. It still gives me chills. I love listening to it. Just randomly, now. Roman Reigns is such a fucking guy that will pump you up. Like, he, he's such a motivational speaker. I, I don't know. I, I'd be part of the bloodline if I could. I don't even care no more. Roman Reigns is a shit. You know what? Just fucking Roman Reigns that shit right now. He's my tribal chief. I can't believe we're saying that. My tribal chief. I'm just saying, dude. That, yeah, that tribal chief had. had <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul Heyman. <laughs> like, did. I mean, Alex seen it. Ethan, did you actually see the promo? No. Or did you mean, do you have to watch that? I'm telling you right now, that was one of the best promos I've ever seen. Yeah, for them to the team. It was one of those things that it started, and we were both like, "What the hell is this?" I like, thought it was a commercial. Yeah, dude. They, they set it up like a commercial. It really because then we were like, "Oh, there's there's Cody Rhodes. I wonder what this is for." And then we're like, "Wait a minute." Roman Reigns just walking out in the middle of Georgia Tech's field. I'm like, but what 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 floors me the most about that shit is that. Sheamus had Georgia Tech winning week one in college football. Yeah. And they were the underdogs. Nobody seen Georgia Tech winning. Sheamus did. 
So the fact that it was right. on Georgia Tech's field, that is fucking dope. That's because Pat Sheamus Mac, he agreed with Sheamus. He was like, all right. That's because Sheamus is a man of culture. I'm just saying that promo is the best promo to date. Since um, the last two years I've been watching. It was good. Because like like we said, it was very like commercially, and then we were like, wait a minute, whoa, what is this? My only beef is I feel like it dragged out a little too long, but it was, but it was good. Care. Everything that was said in that promo was just fire after fire after fire. Anger after anger after anger. Like that that whole promo was good. I don't care how long it was. I mean, I will say it might have went a little too long, like closer to the end. But the fact that I was right again, just fucking, that had me fueled up because I said Roman's going to. They're going to tag team. They're going to do all this crazy shit. And then he's going to come back and, for the title. And again, Roman did mention to him, once I'm done with this, I'm, I'm coming back for what's mine. I'm like, yep. oh, you. So there's some, there's some bad blood. Ha <laughs> ha. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha 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 ha. Um, next match on SmackDown was Apollo Crews versus Giovanni Vinci. They're doing Vinci. Right. They're doing him dirty. And I love it. I kind of love it, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, the announcer... Oh, fuck. I can't remember who it was. I, I think Wade Barrett's one the, said it. One of the best tag teams. To, now he's getting his ass. He said that about him taking too long the week before about yeah. taking his coat off. And the ref... Oh, the ref was in uh, The ref was in on... I'm that ref, dude. Fuck, get that fucking coat off. Let's fight, motherfucker. Right? Let's go. So. Um, Nia Jackson Stratton versus Bailey and Naomi. Naomi. Which I kind of missed that, but I'm pretty sure they, they both... Naomi and Bailey pinned at the same time. Yeah. So because I, I told Alex, that what happens then? And now I guess it's going to be a singles match. Yeah. So. Um... Three mm -hmm. Profits and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline. That ended in a no contest. Yeah, because they just started going after each other. Like. Right. It just was pure chaos, as I'm, you know. I was shocked to see Street Profits, though. I mean, they're not who I was expecting. Yeah, I didn't expect them either, which is good. I like I like when I can't predict it yeah, because I it's know. like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I, I was, I was pleased it was the Street Profits. I, I knew like, they had beef before, but I like the Street Profits. So, okay, and then that that was all for SmackDown. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to Raw, which Chris like, SmackDown was kind of blame, like SmackDown was so. La Knight. I, I mean, the La Knight. I'm glad they started it with that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the only, that's yeah. the only good thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, Chris has already sort of said about the beginning of Raw. That shit was a banger. I cannot remember what's the beginning of Raw. So, yeah, okay. Let me just sum it up for you. They're going through all the entrances, you know, like, uh, I don't know who all was. I just know Drew McIntyre was in there. They're yeah. all coming from the road and shit. You know how they do that from the parking lot. Oh, yeah. And then, and then here you got a doll of a stereo and Liv coming in there in their little oh, hot drive yeah. car. That's right. And they start parking that shit. And they're just, oh, oh. And the next thing you know, you just see fucking Braun Strowman and Braun Serie just take out the merch. That guy. was so oh, funny. Yeah, and they're going out. But what made that entire shit funny was Dirty Fucking Dom, dude. This live like points at the fucking tables, like, hey, like, just kind of like, hey, look. Dom goes over and knocks something up, the merchandise. That's so funny. <laughs> that is his little... hey, hey, listen. Saying, live, man. You're looking mighty fine, those sparkly pants. I don't know what color they were looking at us, you know? They were looking. They were looking sparkly. You know what I mean. <laughs> I, I will. I mean, I have to say it. Dom Dominic Mysterio is one of the best heels. He really is. He is. is. I love Dom. He, he is so entertaining. 
I, t- I told Chris he, he, uh, I hate him. I, like, I love Dom, but I hate him, like, because he's so good. You love to hate him. Yes, yes. But I'm like, he acts like a puppy dog. I said, that is the best way to describe Dom. He's a little chihuahua, like, lo- lots of bark and no bite. But the fact, like, okay, so that was the entrance, and they, obviously, they literally go from Liv and, and Dom in the car to the, all the way to the ring. And if she's yeah. doing a little promo, you know, they're laughing shit. Well, obviously, Rhea Ripley comes out. And I just, I lost my shit. First off, Australians, I love y'all. I love you guys. I'm an Australian. Fan. Y'all need to learn how to say shark. Shark. Shar. Shark, not shock, not shock cage. <laughs> you know, because when Rhea Ripley, she comes out and she says, Dom's going to be hanging above the match in a shock cage. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. First off, <laughs> what? First off, it's like, is he getting out of hand and shock the cage? Like, I thought it was like electrocuting him. Well, then, I think Wade Barrett's the other one. Isn't he all strange? So he was the one there. (laughs) British. (laughs) Who is the other? There was some guy on the announcer desk. I can't think of his name. He said the same thing. Shock case. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? No, it was was probably Wade Barrett. I imagine that British accent is fairly close. Yeah, probably. Okay, okay. He said shock. So I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then finally, somebody says shark i'm like oh okay that makes sense it's like there's no way they're gonna be hanging a dude and shocking him like <laughs> that sounds like the electric chair to me you know like hey, you so know, be entertaining so <laughs> it would be it would be but i was like when they said shark cage i'm like oh i'm just picturing gotcha. i'm just picturing dominic mysterio hanging like 20 feet above the ring <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know I, just, I thought that was cool i love i love that they're gonna do something like that i ain't never seen it's, that shit I, i'm so excited for it's, it it's the next dominic mysterio custody match yep but <laughs> again australians i love you i've never i i want to visit your very poisonous dangerous place one day Fashion. Just say shark. Shark. Okay? That's all I gotta say about that. I was confused. Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> Alright. First match of the night then was Sami Zayn versus Kaiser. And who won that oh, match? I loved Gunther. You know, he's like... He wins the match. He's coming out like, oh, yeah. So you wanted that title match. You really want that title match. You really, really want that. No, no, no. And just walks away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's the kind. We're so unserious. Yeah, I, I'm excited that he's not giving it to him because I'm just fucking tired of Sami Zayn. Lo- love him. Like, like, why, why does he have to do... Why? Yeah, you took the Intercontinental Championship from him, but why do you have to do it again? Do, do it again. Have... Yeah, do let, it again. let somebody else... I'm curious I, I, Curious to see who is going to face Gunther. Maybe they're yeah. trying to figure that out. That's why they're dragging it yeah, out. Yeah, that could yeah, be. That could be. Like, mm, I don't know who we should do. Mm. Randy Orton? I, I mean... I don't know why they didn't give it to right. him. Megan, you of course is all for that. Well, yeah. You gotta be. It's Randy Orton. Um, next match was Dragon Lee versus Carlito. I uh, I'm actually glad Dragon Lee won that. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, I think he's a good wrestler. <laughs> Me too. Um, the next match, I'm gonna read it exactly as Bleacher Report titled it: The Miz versus Bronson Reed, or not. Or not. <laughs> and that yeah, ended... Trump comes in there and just destroys Yeah, everything. I was going to say, that ended in a no match. So, thank God, because I feel like The Miz would have been snapped in half. All I know is 
next week is gonna be off. Good banger. Um, next match then was Damage Control versus Unholy Union with Damage Control winning. Never thought I'd be on the side of Damage Control, but I I am kind of a fan. Not not necessarily against Unholy Union. I just mean in general, like. Hey, I, actually, I, was, I could agree with that one. I was telling Megan, um, Kyrie Zane's really, really good. Uh, yeah. Well, when I was watching, I was like, "Wow, oh, this is actually she's really good at this." Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like Damage Control, and I, I'm actually with Alex on this one. I'm a fan of Unholy Union just because of Alba Fry, but or Fire, I guess. Yeah, uh, you call her Fry every time, and it cracks up. Every time. Every, every time. fucking time. Um, but I, I just, I'm starting to grow a little bit with damage control, just because I, I just, I don't know. I just one of those, that's how WWE writes their shit. You hate them one minute, and then you start growing. Like, it's like yeah, the Grinch. You start know. growing a heart. Well, I know. Minute. So. And their entrances are dope, because they're just coming out drunk. I think yeah, that's well, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, like that's just how I walk. That's how I walk normally. Um <laughs> next match was New Day versus American Maid. You sure that was a... You mean the Creed brothers? Wow, Bleacher Report needs to get their shit together. Yeah. But is, say, isn't that still American made though? I mean, yeah, but I don't think Gable Gable wasn't out there. Well yeah, yeah I guess he was. He interfered, I think. Or, or tried to, and then the ref was like, No, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I think American I mean, think the the whole division thing's the American made. The tag team's the Creed Brothers. Oh well okay. okay. I, I wasn't sure they were just gonna buy American made or yeah, that's what I yeah. thought too. Well, I think that, like I said, the tag team's the Creed Brothers because Gable's not part of the tag. Oh yeah, team. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I was I was confused a little bit there. And then let's talk about the cream of the fucking crop. Yeet. I didn't, Yeet. I didn't watch that part. Yeet. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I. I was torn a little bit because I like Braun Breaker. But you, you yeah, know, I was. Shit, dude, I love Jay. We so. were just, I, even, we were just laying there and like we're, we're like we're like about half watching. I'd say like we were watching right. enough to, to kind of follow along. And fucking Jay Uso pinned Bra or Braun in one, and I freaking hit Chris. I went, oh my god. Oh well, when when uh. <clears throat> So we were we were already hyped to begin with. We, we were standing. Well, yeah, we were I mean. And then, so Jay, when Jay pinned him the first time, we thought he was going to win. He kicked out. I was like, oh, my fucking God. I was like down on the ground with my face down. Like, this I is it. No, he's, not gonna, he's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. And he got thrown outside the ring. I'm like, oh, no, here comes that fucking spear. And Jay's going to lose. And then he did what? the kick. And I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. Listen. <laughs> The only thing I want to see from Jay now is a yeet move. You know, I want to. Oh my god! The move where he goes yeet and then like I don't know, does something like jumps off the rope, like a new so splash, but with a yeet. Yeah, do a new so splash, but do a yeet before he does it. That, that, that I mean, be... that would, yeah, that change it. I make it his own flair. Yeah, that'd be Dude, fine. It's just, I don't know. I just. This shit is funny as fuck. But, but yeah, as soon as, as soon as fucking Braun came out, he fucking goes to spear him and Jey Uso spears him. That's when I was like, yeah, that's it. I was like, yep, that's it. He's yep. he's winning. And I was there like, holy shit. I woke up our baby because I, I yelled. <laughs> spears him through the fucking, the fucking uh, barrier and shit. I was like, yeah, this, this shit's over. And he did uh, another Uso splash just for good measure. And I'm like, that's it. Yep. That's it. And Rhea being so excited for that was awesome. Like, she was, I don't know if you guys seen, like, the after. I watched some of the clips, like, I obviously, I watched fucking WWE on my Instagram. It's, it's yeah. all, dude, that's, I if, don't I don't, if I don't see Monday Night or SmackDown, 
I'm on Instagram watching what WWE posted. Yeah. I, I only I show all the good day. Day. I saw the clip when he was talking to the one. I can't remember her name, but because they had to cut the show short because it was running into the next show. Yeah, yeah. And I cut it off. I was like, that's that's rude. <laughs> Yeah, it did just kind of end abruptly, and I was like... Yeah, I was like, I'm over here celebrating, and then it's just done. What? (laughs) Click. And that stupid-ass show came on after. The Anonymous. Oh, my God. I have to talk about that for a second, though. I shot the hell out of Megan with something I said. I'm not going to say it on here, but it was so funny. I got one thing to say about that show. And the only thing I... The only reason I got to bring this up is because you know the Van Oss crew. Basically, I do works in that. Marcel's in that. He's in the game show. Huh? Yeah, that's Marcel. Basically, he's in the game show. Because, so, it came on at SmackDown, I think. I'm pretty sure it was SmackDown. It came on after SmackDown as well, because it's a USA show. Whether it was a rerun or not, I don't care if it's a rerun or not. I'm sitting there. Um, I was, I was, we just got a TV. We just got another extra TV so I can watch right. more football. And right. I'm sitting there setting it up, and I hear Marcel. Like I heard, like they say his name, Marcel, and I like, I like my head snapped over, and I look at the TV. And I'm like, huh? So then I, I like got invested for a second. I, I'm sitting there watching it, and then there's Marcel, like literally Marcel. I'm like, holy fucking shit! Holy fucking shit! I said, that's Marcel. So I texted Alex right away. I was like, yo, you're not gonna believe this. But whatever show comes on, I didn't even know the fuck, dude. I didn't even know the name of the show at the point. I said, whatever show came on after SmackDown, Marcel's in that game show. And she's like, nah. I'm like, yeah, it's called The Anonymous, because I had to look it up. So, so he's he's basically I Do Work. Is that is that his gamer tag name? Yeah, basically yeah. I Do Work. Okay. He's, okay. He's, their, he's their token black guy that they have. Oh, he's funny. Can I put that? Oh, he's hilarious. I'm not, oh, yeah. I, 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 I'm not familiar with him out of all the Vanoss crew, but... I was just so excited because, like, oh my god, that's actually Marcel. Yeah, that's like, actually we like, Whoa. Like, That's fucking awesome. Oh, let me show you my new setup. Actually, while I'm... I'll send it to you on Snappity Chat. I think I, I, I think I saw it the other day. I had it on my story. Yeah, that's our new. Yeah, TV I actually. saw it the other day. I mean, yes, yeah, so I send it again so I can get another good look at it, but. Um, well, now it's just talking about matches that are going to happen next week on, well, I guess technically this week, on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, not a whole lot that they've announced. SmackDown, they have Bailey versus Naomi for the Contenders match. Which we knew that was coming. Yeah. I feel like Bailey's winning it, but my heart kind of wants Naomi to win it. But I know Bailey's winning. No, yeah, no, no. I, feel, I feel like this should make it interesting and make Ni- have Naomi win it. I see. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, I, I, I have a feeling Bailey's winning, but I'm gonna say, since we're predicting, shit, I'm going to go a different route here. I think Nia Jax or Tri- Tiffany Stratton is going to interfere with the match, and then they're going to make it a triple threat. Okay, that's. Because that's yeah, just that's how Jax, that's how Naomi, or that, what the fuck's her name, Nia Jax is. She's one of those ones that she'll, she'll interfere with it, and then, you know, general manager will come out and say, all right, oh, you know what, since threat. you want to do, you want to do it like this, now it's a triple threat match. Yeah, I could see that for sure. It'd be funny as fuck if they make it a fatal I, four with Tiffany Stratton in it, dude. That would loads my shit, dude. Yeah, that would be... Um, the only other match is fucking for the tenth week in a fucking row, I feel like. Andrade versus Carmella Hay. Carmelo oh Hayes, good lord. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that one's gonna go on for a while, I think. They're trying to make that They're trying know. to milk it and it's They it's are, not yeah. Working. Um, and that's just SmackDown. That's all you got for SmackDown. That yeah, that's all I have for SmackDown. That's all that they had another, announced. Another one. Do you have any for Raw? Because I know at least one for Raw. Uh, I have three for Raw. Okay, you go ahead. Um, I wasn't sure if you had any or not. Uh, Gable versus Kingston. Kofi Kingston. And then this one, this one I actually had to read because I said, 
what? Did I miss something? And apparently I did. Xavier Woods versus Rey Mysterio. Oh, yeah, that was after the New Day match. I was like, yeah, were... I missed something somewhere, and I guess I did. <laughs> they said That one's uh, going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm interested to see that one as well. And then, th- I hope to God, as much as I love to see these two fight, I hope to God this is one of the last times we see this. But a last man standing match between Bronson and no, Reed. No, 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 no. Reed, you better reword that. Say it the way the Raw, that Raw posted it. Last monster standing. Oh, I was going to say, it just says oh, last yeah. man standing. That's. Last monster. But yeah. the fuck, dude, those guys are huge, dude. Yeah, I know. And, hey, I just got to say something. The Braun Strowman picking Bronson Reed up with one hand. Dude, uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I used to say that Jay Cargill would, like, jerk you off in one stroke. I don't even think it would take him one stroke. It would take him a half a stroke and you're jerked off. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. 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 (laughs) Okay. So, Ethan, Ethan, I feel like I don't don't think Chris is going to know anything about what I'm about to say. I think this match is going to end with Brodus Clay coming out. (laughs) Who is that? Somebody call my mama. Somebody call my mama. Well, if you want Brutus Clay, someone better call his mama. <laughs> what the Funkosaurus, isn't that wasn't that his, his is name? Not I, back. I know, if, right? If Vince McMahon's the reason why he left. I know, and Vince McMahon's gone, so he... Hey, by the way, uh doc, I, they, just say there was something about a documentary that might come out about that shit. Yeah. yeah. Comes out he released a statement. Time. Well, he already released a statement and shit, so it's definitely coming. Yeah, Naomi came back, so Brutus Clay can come back. <laughs> Listen. I would die if he I, came I back. I hope the Bronson Reed one doesn't end just yet. I think a last man, last monster standing is a great way to end it. Yeah. But I, I feel like we should go one up and do a steel cage match. I, mean, I knew that's what you were going to say. I knew. Imagine those fucking guys in a steel cage match, dude. That would be. Uh... Right, right out of it. That's what I'm saying. That shit would be dope, dude. I'm just, that, that would be scary as I fuck. I would be okay with that if they wanted to end this rivalry with that. I mean, last man standing is going to be fucking good, too. Uh, but, agreed. Like, Uh, that's all I had. Hold on. Yeah, with that whole. So another thing, like, I'm gonna go ahead, Alex. You are blurrier than fuck. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, I got more <laughs> bliss news. Let me bring it up so I can I keep... make sure. I... Why are you so blurry, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> so I have. Damn, I can't even focus. Look, that's like a ghost over there. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure Bliss posted on her Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's one of her diva photos from the WWE. Um, and it says, and she quoted, "Don't worry, darling. I'll see you soon enough." Like I'm like I'm like on the edge. Like I'm she's coming back. She's coming I back. Think that's why it's taking them a while to come back. They're waiting for Alexa. What do you mean? I feel like that's why the Wyatt Six isn't doing anything right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like they're waiting. And then her last so this is this is the one I wanted to bring up during the podcast. Uh, I shared it to, obviously, we have a WWE chat. Um, out here, I'd look at the camera, woman. Uh, we have a we have a chat, and I had to bring this up during the podcast. She, uh, she posted Boo with a ghost on her Twitter. Oh, she's you... referencing Boo Dallas. Hi, I'm Boo Dallas. Oh, you want to say network. 
fucking reply to the tweet. Oh, like, yeah. oh, that's that, that's yeah, not, yeah. Like, if that's not exciting, I don't know what is. That Yeah, because that means that they're connected to like, her. They're acknowledging her. Yeah. I'm sorry, Spotify. Um, this is exclusively on YouTube. I'm going to try to show the, the tweet reply on the camera here. I don't know if it'll work. It might blur it out. Here, hold on. Let me... Um, so what, what I think the Wyatt Six needs to do is they, I mean, they they can, they just, that show up, they just need to show up and not say anything like, no one hint that she's there or whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, YouTube, you got to see that a little bit. Uh, USA Network's posting her with Lily and shit and waving, like, bro. If that's not like a sign that something's coming, and everyone's like USA Network, you know, know you know WWE doing it. It's it's USA doing it. Yeah. So yeah, and she's also going to be in a Netflix series, or I don't know if it's a series or a, a movie, The Queen of Villains. So I'm excited to watch that. It's on Netflix, September. 19th i didn't get to watch it yet but it's been on there so i don't know i don't know if that's why maybe usa network said something about it but i guess it's possible yeah i gotta watch that but yeah i had to bring that up so if that's one to be the last thing you want to say alec that's fun that's, that's all i have all right, so I'm going to go ahead. I didn't do the plug in in the beginning of the freaking podcast like I should have. Um, Spotify, if you guys made it this far, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, but here's a plug for Spotify. Twitch.tv slash Murdoch Gamer. Um, and YouTube Gaming. It would be uh, Murdoch Gaming on YouTube. Um, so... Hope you guys come over, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can see some clips. Um, I think next week, uh, like I said, I want to talk about some. We're obviously going to talk about NFL and WWE like our normal, um, but we're going to add some hockey in there. We're going to add some esports. Yeah. Esports should be like a really quick segment, um, and maybe some motocross in there. But I want to do a game with Alex on NFL. Um, oh. I want to. I want to do uh, like a, a bus game. So like it's it more or less I want to add it where uh, a t- if a team should be worried about not making the playoffs or a team shouldn't be worried like the Bills, for instance, they right now they're sitting pretty good. They shouldn't be yeah. worried. The Bengals should be worried. So I want to go through the teams. I'll do my research. Um, and yeah, hopefully next week we have some cool th- things for you. Also, next week, hopefully we have a game or two on the screen I want to do as well. Um, ranking the NFL teams. Um, I see a lot of people ranking. So I'm like, you know what? I think I should do that because I think I'd be all right with it. Um, so well, I'll get with Alex. Hopefully we can have that up next week. If not, we'll, we'll get it up at some yeah. point. So... Um, and again, Twitch, um, I'm about to do my DraftKings pick. So you guys won't be able to see that. That's exclusively a tw- YouTube only thing. So with that being said, does anyone want to add anything or is that it? Hockey's coming, baby. Hockey. Let's go Utah. Let's go Utah. Hockey club. I, I thought it was Mormons. That's what it Salt is. Salt Lick City. That's what I would have called it. Salt Lick. Salt Lick. <laughs> That'd be my hockey thing. But all right. <clears throat> With that being said, peace out, everybody. Love y'all. And I'll see you guys next week with our lovely host, Juniper, and our lovely guest, Ethan. Uh? Peace out. Love y'all. All right, welcome, YouTube, to the end of the podcast segment where I pick my picks of the bets. Um, We're going to just fly through these real quick. 
Um, I lost my no sweat bet, so let's hopefully we hit one of these here soon. Uh, I had the Pittsburgh Steelers winning. I had the Jets winning. I had Minnesota winning, which that odds is oof. Um, I had Tampa Bay winning, which is another scary game. And um, putting my heart and soul again in the Bengals. Um, I had the Rams winning, which is looking scary as well. Um, I had the Falcons winning. I have Houston winning, which that can be a, a toss-up game too. I mean, Jacksonville's 0-3, so we'll see. We don't bet the 49er game ever. And I had the Cardinals winning. I have the Chiefs winning. And I have the Raiders winning. And I don't do the Sunday night game. I don't do the Monday night game. And I don't do the Thursday night game. So let's see here. With 11 picks, the odds are plus 32,000. Man, that's a good one. I have Steelers, Jets, Vikings, Bucks, Bengals, Rams, Falcons, Texans, Cardinals, Chiefs, Raiders. Put in that money, baby. Sixteen hundred dollars. Let's get this fucking money. Can somebody please give me some good luck? All right. Can somebody like like this video or something? Just give me some good luck. Sixteen hundred dollars on Sunday. If all them teams win, that's a lot of teams. Just eleven teams I picked. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Let's fucking place this shit. Let's get this money. All right. Well, with that being said, love you guys, and I'll see you next week on the next bet. Peace out.